Hey, it's Alex, and we are here at Happy Garage. It's just a cool little cafe here in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And we're having a little meet up here, chatting about life in Vietnam and teaching English out here. So, um, yeah, we're just going to go hang out a bit. <laughs> How you guys doing? Good. 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 Mm. Excellent. Where did you even find that shirt? Um, at a bar, the first debate in B1. It was for Democrats abroad. It was that group. Okay. And just for anyone who's interested, oi is like how you address people in Vietnam. Chi oi, anoi, emoi, Hillary oi, Vietnamese shirt right there. Why don't you tell, tell people about your Bin San market experience? My, my experience was, I don't know, quite crazy because I'm, I'm not a person that's that into like physical contact the whole time. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, the alleyways are quite small yeah. and there's so much to see of everything and everyone is dragging you into their stall. Like, right. I'll take a note for an answer. It's like, by the hand, and all of a sudden you're in a new stall, and they're trying to sell you something. And the more you say, like, no, no, I'm just looking, I'm browsing. It's going around. What do you want? Like, yes, like, no, 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 it's I have your shirt, your size, I have your pants, your size. I'm like, no, no. So I kind of, yeah, I was kind of flustered, and just kind of got out of there quickly. It's, it's a good experience. I have, I have quite a lot of everything. Yeah. Um, I found my Halloween wig there. Oh yeah? Yeah, last weekend. And they were approaching Jackson more because she kind of stands out a little bit more than I did. <laughs> but um, when I answered in what I was looking for, I said I wanted a wig, they would point me in the direction. Oh yeah. Okay. yeah. And I found a wig. So last year, in December, I came here and bought a pair from a guy on the street yeah. for, I forgot how you it was like 20 US dollars. Ooh. Were they like, wow. I forgot the target. <laughs> So uh, yeah. I wouldn't pay now more than five dollars. Yeah. So like what? It's like dollars. Yeah, for a pair of sunglasses on the street here in Vietnam, you should pay about hundred to two hundred thousand yeah. max. Like them five down. five dollars. Yeah, bargain them down. This. I got this shirt that says like same thing but different on the back, and so I finally got it down to like seventy. And then she wanted to get one, and they were like hundred and eighty, and we were like, uh, yeah, right. We got this for seventy. I've actually noticed a difference uh, in Hanoi versus here. Here they kind of just give you the right price. In Hanoi, after. even after, yeah, they just give you like a, a good price. But in Hanoi, if they see you're a foreigner, they would actually up the price for you. And then you'd have to negotiate and say like, no, no, it's not worth that. It's worth this, you know? It's quite strange because you have the highway running past the airport and you have this massive shopping center and then there's like a little sidewalk like in the middle like that and there's like little tables and chairs there and they took me there to eat and i'm like, I'm like is this gonna be good am i gonna am i gonna be sick tonight and it was so good it was yeah. amazing food and what was it just all seafood okay um, nice clams and i don't even know what i had duck eggs <laughs> and some cheese griller things. And it was really good because I just told them, listen, you guys order, yeah. I'll try. How old are your students? Uh, I think they're teenagers. Yeah. Some of them, so well, last night I actually heard that in, in Vietnam, especially if it's girls, the parents don't allow them to go out at night because uh, the parents are afraid that they have girlfriends or boyfriends. <laughs> so they're not right. allowed to go out. They yeah. kind of develop a lot later, yeah, I, like mature later, I feel yeah. like after university and stuff is like, because I think students here are just working really hard up until like they get out of university yeah. and they just, that kind of slows down their like social development. Yeah. So you're, this was your first time leaving, yeah, South Africa. leaving South Africa? I've never been outside the borders of my own country, like even neighboring countries in South Africa, never been. Um, 
travel South Africa quite extensively, but that was it. So first time leaving country, I'm just moving to Vietnam on my own. Um, I, I found now that rolling with the punches, just accepting what happens is the best way to do this. You can't come to this country with a mindset, with a Western mindset. You can't do that. You have to accept that things are going to be different here. You'll see similarities. You'll see a Western restaurant, you know, <laughs> a burger or a pizza. But then, you know, you can do that. And that's sort of your, your taste from back home again. And it keeps you, it keeps you centered, it keeps you sane. But you have to just roll with everything that this country brings. How long did it take you two until you gave into the Western food? We were pretty emotional day. I've been living out here, like out in Asia for like three years and it's just nice to mix it up like I don't miss like Western food I, what is Western food anyway it's like I guess like a pizza or like yeah something like that I only eat Western food like occasionally but I don't hold myself back from doing it so I only I only have it when I already want it. Are you but teaching uh, today at all? No, no. Uh, okay. I have that beer tasting thing today. Oh yeah, right. I'm uh, teaching tomorrow, teaching Saturday, Sunday, uh, and then hopefully next week more hours. What is your, like, do you teach in the afternoons or evenings? Evenings, yeah, yeah. Mostly in the evenings, the, the, the campus that I'm at now uh, don't really have uh, afternoon classes okay. yet. Um, the campus has been up and running for about a year, um, so fairly new, um, but weekends is crazy, crazy, crazy. It is from the morning, 20 to 8, until the evening, half past 9, and you can be at lunch and like 15 minute breaks behind between classes. So if you haven't prepped for a class, yeah, you, you have 15 minutes. <laughs> so every Saturday is all day, pretty much, yeah. Saturday and Sundays. Sundays they, they uh, close at quarter past six or your last class in quarter past six. But Saturdays and the rest of the week your last classes in at half past nine. Yeah. Do you have two days off in a row? Or you... Now I have. Okay. Uh, just because I'm waiting for new classes. Yeah. Uh, so I actually have quite a lot of time off now. Yeah. And, uh, but you, you can ask for two days in a row. But generally, if, if you want to have your 25, 30 hours a week, you, you can get a day because you have to kind of make up during the week. Um, it was difficult to get used to the idea that weekends aren't weekends anymore. Yeah. You now have to work because that's a very Western thing as well, yeah. is having a weekend. We're here, you don't really need it because, I mean, if you're teaching in the evenings during the week, you have your entire day. Um, to do whatever, if you want to do something and then you kind of go to class, have class then, then you know, okay, it's half past nine or it's ten. I, I'm only teaching in 24 hours again, so if I want to go out, I can, or if I want to drive around. The problem is that most restaurants close at about ten. Yeah. So if you're teaching until about half past nine, you know, you still do your admin after class, get out of there by ten. Now it's like, where do you go? Yeah. It's like, what do you do? I found it really good. Um, also, eat.vn is the same kind of thing, and you can just order from like a lot of different restaurants. So, Vietnam and Vietnam, it's like three M's, right? Yeah. .com. Pretty good for delivering and ordering food. Very important, especially if you've never been anywhere, or you've never traveled. I think it's a really good thing to get out of your space as soon as possible. Yeah. Because then you get Just, in the routine yeah. of staying there and you're like, this is my yeah. safety, comfort zone. Yeah, and the thing is, you, you isolate yourself. <laughs> yeah. Where, you know, even if you don't know anyone or, you know, you don't know the language, which none of us do yeah. when, we, when, we, when we come here, right. you have to just sort of break the isolation you have to walk around yeah. um, get lost <laughs> get lost you have to get lost use your phone yep. your gps you know if you're lost but do get lost i mean i still do that now yeah, it's fun. i mean i get on my bike and i drive in a direction and i don't know where i'm going yeah and then it comes to a point where okay i'm running low on gas i kind of need to figure out where i am now yeah. then i take out my phone gps okay i'm about 
20 kilometers from home now and if you kind of find a gas station and then go back. When people are arriving, I just try and think back to how I felt when I first, because for me it was South Korea where I arrived and you know went through the orientation period there but then I remember the first day I went into my apartment and I was just like I just got in there and I'm like sitting there like I actually it's quite funny I, I have a video clip I want to see if I can find that of me like because I, I was trying to film videos right from the get-go of my experience there and I was just sitting there like with the camera in my room I was just like almost in shock and I didn't yeah. know what to say yeah. or yeah. like I was just like oh but then yeah after then you just get out and you start walking around you just start to experience everything and then you know you get used to it and like that's how you got to do it here the thing that actually got me going out and walking about was hunger I bought I don't know one of the most expensive microwaves I don't know why because I thought I would be grilling because my microwave now has a, has a grilling function as well. Bought a new, brand new phone. First phone I've ever owned that I've bought by, you know, brand new. Because I, I, I'm used to hand-me-downs. Yeah. Cutlery, dishes and everything. So, and I mean, I still have tons, tons of money there. Yeah, so having a good month of teaching, I mean, you can kind of splurge. Yeah, just for anyone who's interested, that's those people that are making those salaries of like a lot, you know, like three thousand, four thousand dollars a month. It's probably someone who's working like during the day at a international school, university, public school, and then working evenings and weekends at an English center. So that way, you're basically working two jobs, but you can make about double the um, salary that if you're working at one for like 20 25 hours a week right all right so that was pretty cool just had a quick meet up here we're going to be doing these regularly so if this is something you're interested in you can come up and uh, come out and meet us here uh, we're going to have it at coffee shops so what are you guys doing <laughs> anyway so yeah join our facebook group i'll link it uh, in the description so you can go across and then you can see the events that we organize so this is something we're doing more of now so you guys can actually meet us in Vietnam and get some arrival advice and support so yeah make sure to head over there subscribe and like this video and we'll be putting out more videos very soon so until next time peace <laughs>